Welcome back to combo class. Today, we're gonna have a little mix uh, between a snack break and a history lesson and a field trip. I recently got the opportunity to take a trip to the island Kauai, one of the Hawaiian islands. And on this trip, I found quite a cool variety of wild fruits, including mangoes and bananas, although the bananas unfortunately were underripe still. And most plentiful of all the fruits were the coconuts. And that led me down a whole rabbit hole of how coconuts were a lot more interesting than I ever realized about their history and their scientific evolution and about how difficult they are to open. And I even chatted with some locals who knew a lot more about coconuts than I did, one of which knitted me this hat out of coconut fronds from a coconut tree. And today, let's go on a little snack break journey to learn about some of these coconut things. First of all, let's note that coconuts don't naturally grow in such a circular or dry and hairy way as how you may associate them from the ones you buy in a grocery store. Coconuts on a tree are much bigger, smoother, and more oblong and they're chopped down to reach this state because despite how hard it is to open this type of coconut, it is far harder to open them when they have that whole husk on top of them. Now, before we get to all of my coconut experiments and coconut stories, let's look at some science as to why coconuts evolved into being very different than the typical fruits we're used to. Let's take a moment to think of some ways in which plants may propagate their seeds. Some can grow from clippings and such and spread themselves onto new terrain in various ways. But one of the most common ways is for a tree to grow a fruit. Fruits often use animals to help them spread their seed because the animal may collect that tasty shell of the seeds, the fruit, and then may eat it and either spit out the seeds somewhere or digest some of them and poop them out somewhere or in some way get the seeds further than they normally would have traveled from the tree. Have you heard the expression that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? Well, that's supposed to signify things about humans ending up similar to their parents. But as an idiom, is it really a good statement? The apple not falling far from the tree. Apples are purely designed by a tree for the sole purpose of getting the seeds as far from the tree as possible. Apples are in that category of fruits that that basically exist to help seeds travel to a farther distance from some animal carrying or eating them. Now, although many plants use animals to take their fruits to further locations, coconuts have a quite different and interesting method. Some of the coconuts I found were right underneath coconut trees that they had probably fallen from, but not all the coconuts. Now here's a coconut that isn't under a coconut tree. How did it get here? Did the animal or plant bring it here? Well, no, the water brought it here. If you were a plant trying to go a farther distance from your tree to spread your plant to some other sort of island, let's say, plants had to evolve to make that work using techniques like tasty fruits for birds that a bird might eat part of, bring over through flight, and then poop out on the other island. But in addition to using the air, Perhaps some plants would evolutionarily evolve so that their seeds could travel on the water 
and that currents from the water could bring them over to another island. Now coconuts, despite having nut in the name, are not nuts, they are botanically fruits. They can fall from a coconut tree and germinate a new coconut tree, which requires coconuts to have two interesting traits. For one, since coconut trees are so tall, when one of these falls, it has to survive the fall, especially if it falls on a rocky ground. And so coconuts developed quite a thick skin over history, evolutionarily adapting to that environment. Coconuts also evolved this circular wood-like shell, in addition to their insides containing liquid and air, so that they could travel on top of water. They float, and they can in fact travel long distances by sea and still germinate into a new tree on another shore. Coconuts also evolved a very thick shell, especially the wild ones with that full husk. And while I was on this vacation, I did also encounter the challenge of how difficult these things are to get open. I'm on vacation and keep finding all these fallen coconuts. So let's see if we can get one open and drink the juice inside and eat the meat. Well, after some failed attempts of opening the coconut on my own, I came to an expert. Luckily, this coconut chopping expert was able to not only help me open one of the coconuts I'd found. Like a, a shot. Looks good to me. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Surprising. Awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah. And yes, it was still good, but also was down to appear in this episode to share some facts about coconuts. This is the umbilical cord. Oh, wow. This is where you can see the face in the coconut. <laughs> okay, so here's the old mature coconut. When you see guys slapping the coconut, it's like finding the ripe watermelon. So if the coconut uh, sounds like a watermelon, that it is a watermelon. It's got a lot of water in it. But if it sounds like a brick, like this, slap it. It hurts your hands, stinks mm -hmm. a little. That's got a lot of shell in there. Shell means meat or coconut inside. Uh -huh. To eat. So less water, more eat to, uh, meat to eat. Hmm. Okay. And how about young coconuts? Young the coconuts ones... sound like the watermelon. I knew about a stage that coconuts go through where they're known as young coconuts, where they are not as ripe as you'd expect them to be good, but in a way are even better. The nectar is sweeter inside and the meat has this interesting gelatinous form. But I didn't know you could also go to coconuts you expected to be overripe still having some cool purpose, where apparently there are old coconuts that are similar to the process used to make coconut oil, but you can find in a coconut itself that has sprouted. The coconut that looks like it's been to the gym, <laughs> it's got a lot of muscles on it. Oh, yeah. This is a older coconut which has more meat in it. After the coconut falls off the tree, it lands at the base of the coconut tree. After about three months time with a lot of humidity and, and moisture, a sprout pops up. Mm. Wow. A tree, a young coconut tree comes up. This is my decoration and also I sell this because it's edible. You can cut this up and where there's water inside is now foam. Huh. And that's where the roots are popping out. That is edible. It tastes just like uh, a, a fermented coconut candy or cotton candy flavor. I also chatted with this guy's colleague who weaves baskets and hats out of fronds of trees such as coconuts. And not only did he offer to weave me this coconut hat, but he was also down to appear in this episode. Um, I was invited here um, over 35 years ago to help my sister make um, 3,500 to 5,500 baskets a week. I used to go up the tree and get them 
but I got sick, so I wasn't able to climb anymore. Believe it or not, I depend on either him to go and get me coconut or coconut leaf. Or sometimes I, I depend on other people. Mm -hmm. These are uh, coconut palm fronds. So usually when I get them like this, I want them to take each one and make them like this. And then I'll take the first one and I'll go about half of that, which is eight. So the whole thing is 16 leaves. And then I'll just follow it all the way around like that. Normally, it, um, it used to take me about oh, a half a day to make a hat. But then each time I started making hats, I got faster. Do you think it's mathematical the way you have to weave them between each other? Yes, it is. Um, if you have an even number, um, it's easy to be put together. But if it's an odd number, then you have to add an extra one to make the even number. Thank you so much. When I returned from this trip, I had learned a lot of cool things about coconuts. And then I bought some new coconuts to use as props while filming this video. And I re-encountered the challenge of how difficult these things are to open. I still cannot get these coconuts to break open somehow, but I hope you learned some interesting things about coconuts with me today. Uh... All right, Carlo, here's the coconut. Right. Drop it. Oh, the, that method worked. All right, I love you all. I hope you enjoyed this little snack break. And extra special thanks to the people who helped make this show possible, such as my Patreon supporters. Make sure you're also tuned into my bonus Demotro channel if you'd like to see my extra content like shorts and live streams. And check this video description for other cool links and info.